Hey guys, I'm out here in the battery shed removing my EVE 280 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries that I installed approximately one and a half years ago. As I'm doing this, there were a few things I wanted to show you and it occurred to me that I haven't really published many videos recently. In fact, it's almost April and I've only published two videos in 2023 so far. And the reason for that is simply a matter of time. I have so many ideas going through my head, so many videos planned out, things I want to do, and I just can't find the time to do them. I've had a few life changes recently, all of which are positive, but they all take away from time to focus on YouTube, which let's face it is kind of near the bottom of the priority list uh, when you factor in work and family and whatnot. So I thought now would be a good opportunity to get an update out. I'm going to show you what these EVE cells look like after a year and a half in use, and I'm going to talk about some of the projects I'm working on currently and uh, things I'm going to do going forward. You know, I've been doing a lot of battery review videos recently and I get offered a lot of stuff and most of it I don't accept and you know the review videos are starting to get a bit uh, boring I guess because we're starting to see the same batteries over and over again just in different cases with different brand names on. So my plan is to do less battery review videos unless it's something that stands out as significantly different and then focus on smaller videos just more of like updates as to what's going on. Uh, that's my plan anyway we'll see how it works. So first up, I wanna show you what these batteries look like that I'm pulling out. So as you can see, I've removed a number of these batteries already. And if you remember when I built these, I used three strips of neoprene uh, high dense foam between the cells. This is 1 16th inch thick foam. And the idea was it would allow these batteries to naturally expand and contract, whether they be at you know empty state of charge or full state of charge. So they are kind of, kind of stuck together a little bit. So let's pull out two of them. And look how nicely these batteries still fit together. It's a perfect fit. However, when you pull them apart here is where it gets interesting. So we're looking at the side profile of the battery. So this is the bottom of the cell here. What has actually happened is you can see how thin the foam is in this spot. And then it gets really thick in the center and then it's really thin on the side here. So, so these batteries have actually expanded a little bit where both of the poles are. So straight up and down from the negative and straight up and down from the positive. And the foam has squished in to accommodate for that expansion. And it's actually, I'd say it's about a quarter, or maybe even a fifth of the thickness it should be. So if I take both of these cells on the sides that do not have the foam attached and put them together, you can see there's now approximately a 1 16th inch gap between them. Uh, so they have expanded a little bit. Now, it doesn't look too bad, and I'd probably consider this to be normal expansion in my opinion. They've pretty much expanded the width of that foam strip, so. Now, I don't consider that to be bad by any means. I think it's actually pretty good, but, but I think what it means is this is probably not the optimal way of building these batteries. So when I rebuild these battery packs, I am going to be removing that foam, and I'm going to put some standard fish paper between them, and I will be compressing them back together. Not really compressing, but rather uh, fixing them into place, the same as we had done here with these threaded rods. And I will certainly be doing a full capacity test of these batteries once I get the new build put together. That way we can see how the capacity has held up over the past one and a half years as well. This is my AIMS 10,000 watt pure sine wave inverter, the low frequency model. Uh, I'm having a little bit of problems with it. So it still runs okay, um, but anytime a load is applied to it, even if it's a small load, there's a very sharp drop in the AC voltage. Uh, it does go back up to where it's supposed to be near instantly, but that sharp drop is enough to flicker lights and it kicks off, you know, computers and certain appliances like that. It never used to do that before. I don't believe it's a wiring problem. I'm not sure what the issue is. I've taken this apart and I've traced over every single connection. The AC side, uh, the DC side, all of the bus bars, the chargers, Every single connection has been traced over and I've put a thermal camera on it. I'm not seeing any abnormalities in terms of like a loose connection causing resistance or anything like that, but I will be removing this from the new system. All right, I know it's a little dark because of the lighting in this room, but here are some of the components I'll be putting in. I have a pair of the LV6548 inverters. I will not be using the V version. I will be using the LV6548s. So in my last video, I compared the LV6548 to the LV6548V. And I learned a couple of things from that video. First off, you cannot use the firmware that enables the new LIA CAN bus protocol on the older inverters. It has to be used on an inverter from Q4 of 2022 or later, which is what the manufacturer said originally. Even though that firmware does load to the older inverters, and you can select the protocol from the menu on the display, parts of it don't function correctly and you can't control certain aspects of your inverter. Uh, the second update is that MPP Solar actually reached out to me about my last video 
and they were somewhat surprised to see that this inverter was consuming 110 watts in my test setup. So they've actually started working with their engineers to figure out what exactly is going on and why that's happening. Um, I don't know what the consumption is supposed to be or what their target value is, uh, but I'm hoping to at least get an explanation out of that uh, and maybe we'll even see a new revision in the future, I don't know. And lastly, you'll see there's a CAN bus cable coming out of the bottom of my inverter and going into my Batrium, uh, but I'm not allowed to talk about that. Some of the other components I've selected that I'm considering, I've got two IMO disconnects. These are two pole 30 amp disconnects. Uh, so I've got one to feed into each inverter here. I've got this small 70 amp load center, which I'll use to combine the outputs of both inverters before it feeds back to my sub panel. I've got a rather large six inch by six inch wireway. I think it's about four feet, five feet long. Uh, which I'll be using to contain most of the cables and everything that comes off of these inverters. Should be nice and neat and organized and it is hinged. Um, so there's a lot of space to work with in there. And then I have a smaller box up here I'll be using for a DC circuit breaker. Probably be at least one more box somewhere maybe on the left side over there. Uh, I haven't entirely figured this out yet. I'm still fitting pieces together. And I know this is a battery channel, but if you are interested in the server and the networking stuff, I do have several new videos on my server channel as well, which I will also link to down in the video description. And one last thing to note is there aren't many channels I actually follow. However, uh, David Paz is one of those channels and he dropped a rather interesting video just yesterday. Uh, he actually took an alternator from a car. I think it was about a 200 amp alternator, removed the regulator from it, hooked it up to a gasoline motor and turned it into a charger for a 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. I don't want to spoil the ending. You'll have to watch the video to see how it worked out, but I really like watching the engineering, uh, DIY engineering aspect of his videos. Uh, if you have any other questions or if there's anything you want to see as I go through this build process, please let me know as well. Hit that like button before you go and thanks for watching.